You hear the screeching of an owl You hear the wind begin to howl You know there's zombies on the prowl And it's terror time again They've got you running through the night It's terror time again And you just might die of fright It's a terrifying time In today's video, we are covering the agility skills. That's right, we'll be taking a look at fitness, strength, and all four agility skills in a comprehensive manner, as well as exercise, and the various professions and traits that affect them. I also want to give a shout out to Kato Phoenix for her lovely artwork. Now let's jump in. Let's start with explaining what strength and fitness are, and let's talk about what they do for you. First is strength, a relatively straightforward skill. This boosts how much you can carry with each level, starting with a total capacity of 6 at level 0 strength, and all the way up to 20 capacity with 10 strength. Strength also affects knockback and damage with melee weaponry, as well as affecting both stomp, damage, and the knockdown chance with each push, shove, and swing. This stat is leveled up in three ways. Exercise, running with a heavy load, and combat. Now let's talk about fitness. Fitness primarily affects endurance both in regards to running and fighting. The more fitness you have, the farther you can run and the more zombies you can safely take on without being winded. Up next is our four agility skills. Now let's start with the most obvious, that being sprinting. The higher your sprinting skill is, the faster you'll run. This is leveled by running, and even if exerted, you can still gain XP by power walking away. It's a fairly straightforward skill. Lightfoot is our next skill. This is basically how quietly you move, and is it leveled up by being sneaky breaky, and sneaking around the map undetected by zombies. Nimble affects a lot of different things. The higher your nimble skill, the faster you can sneak around. It affects how likely you are to trip when you're running and jumping over, say, fences or climbing a wall, and how much visibility is lost upon aiming at zombies, and it also affects how fast you can move while in the combat stance, so you can shuffle around more effectively. This can be leveled either via sneaking or jumping fences. Sneaking is probably one of the most straightforward of the skills as well. This one's leveled up by sneaking, and it determines, you guessed it, how good you are at moving around undetected. Now there are a few ways you can level sneaking easily. If you can make a loud source of noise like a very loud radio or a car siren and sneak away from it, you can come back once a horde's gathered and sneak along the outskirts of said horde for massive XP gains. As sneaking XP's leveled faster and faster depending on how many zombies you are moving past undetected. Newly introduced with the build 41, now you have the ability to exercise. This is a great way if you have some spare food and some time to kill to build up your strength and fitness on a weaker character and slowly grind it even higher for an average character. Now there is currently 7 exercises in the game, 3 of which require a barbell or dumbbell to complete, and each provide a variety of positives and negatives. Burpees for example provide an all body workout, increasing both fitness and strength, but as a consequence your entire body will feel pain and feel weak and your thirst will shoot up rapidly. Each exercise targets a specific part of your body and a specific skill. Push-ups bolster your strength, but weaken your arms, making your attacks weaker and less effective. Squats, however, do the opposite, targeting your legs and bolstering fitness, but also make you walk and run slower, hampering your ability to get away. Exercise is best used when you've got some time to kill, some extra resources you can afford to spare, and time to recover. 
You'll also suffer the negative effects of pain in various degrees based upon how much exercise you did the day before. So this will also affect your swing speed, your swing accuracy, and a variety of other factors. So be sure to keep these in mind before you go for your workout. Fitness also affects your agility in another manner. The more you work out, the more calories you burn. The more you burn, the faster you lose weight, which can be very useful for burning off, say, an overweight perk taken for the points, but keep in mind not to push your weight too low or else you'll incur weakening traits from being underweight. Now let's talk about the professions and traits that affect strength, fitness, and the agility stats specifically. We'll start with all the professions. First up to bat is the fire officer. This one comes in strong with a plus one boost to strength, fitness, and sprinting. That's right, you'll be able to run for longer, run faster with that sweet, sweet XP boost, and hit harder while also carrying more loot with you on each trip. A groovy job, to say the least. Burglar is one of the jobs that directly affect the agility skills the most. With a plus two boost in nimble, sneaking, and light-footed, as well as the bonus of being able to pop locks more reliably and hotwire cars off the get-go, Burglar is a very strong job of choice for the stealth oriented player. Security guard's another solid choice, coming with two levels of sprinting, one level of light footed, as well as the killer night owl trait for less sleep required. Police officer only affects one agility stat and that's nimble, but it does provide a nice boon to firearms which will be useful for fighting the undead. Nurse also only provides one point towards an agility skill. This being light footed, not exactly a great boon, but it does also give you two levels of first aid, which is nice for those who tend to get injured a lot. Now, fitness instructor is very useful in terms of agility. This job provides plus two to sprinting, but it also gives you a plus three to fitness. If you don't have any negative traits that affect it, that means you'll start with a level of eight fitness, and that's pretty damn good for running away like the roadrunner. <laughs> or fighting longer fights. Now that concludes the job portion, and now we start taking a look at all the traits that affect you one way or another. Now keep in mind that not every one of these provides a straight stats up or down. Take Adrenaline Junkie for example. Sure, on the surface it doesn't provide an obvious agility boost, but hit max level panic and your character will run and sprint 10% faster, letting you make your getaway that much easier, so I'm counting it as an agility related trait. Athletic is a solid trait, but highly expensive. 10 points, but you do get 4 levels of fitness, 20% faster running speed, and you'll lose endurance 60% slower. Overall, it's not a bad choice. Strong is the same, but it provides strength boost instead, giving you plus 4 strength and 40% bonus damage with weapons. Unfit and weak are the opposites of the two mentioned traits, but they provide a minus 4 fitness and a minus 5 strength respectively, and they both give you 10 points to work with. Both are dangerous options, however. Now, Fit and Stealth provide a plus two to fitness and strength respectively. The key difference is Fit doesn't let you run faster, while Stealth still gives a 25% boost to melee damage. The negative versions of these stats are out of shape and feeble, respectively. Both of these provide a minus two to their respective traits. Graceful is another one of those traits that doesn't seem to truly be an agility-related trait. Until you realize it reduces is the noise you make by 60%. This makes your sneaking that much more effective to get past all those Zed heads. And the same applies for inconspicuous, which makes you 50% less likely to be spotted by the zombies. Combine these two with say burglar, and you've got a recipe for Metal Gear Zomboid. Clumsy and conspicuous are the negative traits opposite to this. Clumsy makes you create 60% more noise while you're on the go, and conspicuous gives you a 100% boost to your likelihood to be spotted by zombies. Now there is a few hobby traits that also directly boost the agility skills. Gymnast provides a plus one boost to nimble and light footed. Hunter provides a plus one to sneaking as well as a plus one to aiming and trapping. And finally runner provides a plus one to sprinting, letting you make your getaway a little quicker. Now there's a few negative traits that don't have an analog to positive traits that also 
also affect your agility. Asthmatic could be a real ass kicker of a trait, given it makes you lose endurance 40% faster while running and 30% faster while fighting, which is going to give you quite the trouble while fighting and fleeing. Obese makes you real fucking fat. Like, you put Big Smoke to shame with that insane order. This also makes your fitness weaker, your endurance will give out faster, and you'll struggle to scale fences and walls. You'll also run slower. Overweight has many of the same downsides, but to a lesser degree. For example, you get a 1% slower run speed, and endurance gives out twice as fast as normal weight. Underweight and very underweight have some very similar downsides to overweight, but directly affect strength instead of fitness. The endurance loss is still applied though. You'll also become more likely to receive injuries due to your frail nature. And the last trait is emaciated. This one isn't selectable. This one can only be acquired via starvation, where your character's weight drops to 50 or less, and at 35, your character will start losing health unless you can reverse the weight loss. Now, all of the weight traits have one thing in common, though. They can be gained or lost at any time, either by burning more calories than you're eating or eating more calories than you're burning, respectively. I think this just about covers everything of relevance to agility at the current point of the game. If I missed anything or should have elaborated, please let me know. And I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please be sure to go give Katos your support and love. Her artwork is fantastic. This has been Core, and I'll see you in the next video.